Welcome to our Kicktastic swim type. The Kicktastic is number three of our six swim types. You can find out a bit more about the system at swimtypes.com. Now it's pretty obvious where the name Kicktastic comes from. These swimmers all tend to propel themselves by kicking very, very hard at the back end of the stroke. They also generally have very, very good body profiles in the water. Bum and legs sitting very, very high, heels breaking the surface of the water. And you'll notice that many of these kicktastics are actually bending almost too excessively from the knee. This often means that the kicktastic, whilst they're putting a lot of effort into their kick, doesn't necessarily mean to say that it's overly propulsive or effective freestyle leg kick. The kick itself is a very interesting one because although all kicktastics kick hard, which is obviously the definition of the type, they're not necessarily aware of how hard they're kicking. In fact, when, when I have a little chat to a kicktastic, after I've seen them swim, they'll often um, say that they think they're getting most of their propulsion from their upper body. So that's a little bit of a tricky one. It can be quite a hard one to self-diagnose if you are a kicktastic. The, uh, the way to self-diagnose that is if you think it is coming from your upper body, just pop a pull boy between your legs and stop kicking. Most kicktastics know instantly where the propulsion is coming from in this respect because relative to other swimmers in their lane, if you're swimming in a squad, you'll slow down. That's right. Now, Compared to our other swim types, the Kicktastic does have a swimming background. Not necessarily a huge one, but they nearly always swam as children. And also, most Kicktastics are female, but of course not all of them. Probably a ratio of about three quarters to a quarter, female to male. One thing that we've noticed over in our squads in Perth, where we do have many Kicktastics in the squad, is that they really tend to enjoy variety in their training programme. So whether this be a combination of drills or focus on speed work or endurance work, the Kicktastic likes to see that variety in a training programme. Whereas a swinger might enjoy something like a long set of 10 400s all at an aerobic pace and just to get into the rhythm, the Kicktastic does like to see that variety there. The kicktastic is another of our swim types that doesn't respond particularly well to traditional swim coaching. Many are told to look straight down in the water and try and get their body position higher. But of course they already have a great body position because of that strong powerful leg kick and often they'd be served much much better by looking a little bit further forward in the water. This is especially true in a wetsuit where the buoyancy of the wetsuit brings the swimmer a little bit higher still. In fact, most kicktastics report that they really don't like swimming in their wetsuit. They often feel quite unbalanced and, and also quite restricted through the shoulders. A big, big tip here is to try swimming with a higher head position looking further forward. It's a much, much more efficient way for you to swim. It's no coincidence here that we see most of these kicktastics pulling through underneath the water with a very, very straight arm pull through. The kicktastic gets its name from relying upon the leg kick to actually propel himself through the water usually because of a lack of an effective catch at the front end of the stroke. By improving the way you catch and pull through, you'll have more confidence in letting some of that leg kick propulsion go in favour of a more effective freestyle stroke, emphasising the catch combined with a good rotation within the stroke there. Now many, many kicktastics report that they often feel short of breath when they swim. And perhaps it's obvious why looking at these kicks. Kicking from a knee so strongly really works the hamstring and the quad muscles very, very hard. Now they're always large muscle groups and they burn a lot of oxygen, leaving you feeling short of breath. As you work on your swimming and improve it, moving more from a lower body to upper body propulsion, you should feel the oxygen demand drop away for the same swimming speed. It may feel strange at first to be using your upper body, but that's okay. Go with it, get used to the sensation and develop your aerobic fitness in your upper body and you'll soon be swimming much more smoothly and effectively. It's quite ironic really that the kicktastic often feels, like Adam said there, that they're actually utilising their upper body to bring themselves or haul themselves through the water there because they can actually feel the amount of stress on the shoulders at this stage in the game. But when you are pulling through with that straight arm pull through, that's precisely where you feel it. And we do find that many kicktastics think that they need to enter into a full on strength programme to try and strengthen up those muscle groups of the shoulder. If you get your catch and pull through right, You'll actually start to rely more upon the pectoral and upper back or lat muscles to pull yourself through. And given the fact that they're actually generally larger muscle groups, they're going to provide a little bit more force in the water and they're not going to fatigue anywhere near as quickly 